In this video, we're going to do a worked example of calculating the reactions and, the bend, and then drawing the bending moment diagram for a frame structure. So first of all, we'll draw the frame structure that we're interested in. So we have a frame. It's continuous going around the top. We have pin support at this bottom left-hand side and a roller support at the bottom right-hand side. I'm going to call this A, B, C, and D. We're going to apply a point load P to the top left-hand side, the joint that I've labelled C. And finally, to complete the description, we need some dimensions. So the height of the columns AC or BD are going to be 3 metres. And the width of the structure or the distance between A and B or C and D is going to be 4 metres. And finally, we're going to specify that P equals 5 kilonewtons. So the first thing that we want to do is to check if this structure is indeed statically determinate. So inspecting the structure, we can see we don't have any hinges involved in the structure. So we can simply look at the free body diagram of the entire structure. So let's quickly draw that. So we have P, we have potential reactions in the horizontal vertical directions at A, potential vertical reaction at B, and we know P already, so we have three unknowns, and we have three equations of equilibrium. So yes, we know that it's a determinate structure. Now that we know the structure is determinate, we can analyze the entire frame to get the reaction forces at A and B. So, reactions, just remind ourselves, free body diagram of the entire structure. So let's redraw that free body diagram again two seconds so r a y and we're going to presume if this is our coordinate axes x and y but that's pointing upwards and therefore positive we have r a x which we're presuming to be positive we have our five kilonewton point load applied at c horizontally and we have r B, Y in the vertical direction at point B. So we've got A, B, C, D. Again, we have three meters height and four meters width. And now we can set up our equations of equilibrium. So sum of the forces in the X direction then is on inspection, we have 5 plus Rax must be equal to 0. Therefore, Rax equals minus 5 kilonewtons. I'm reminding ourselves that minus means it's going opposite to the direction that we presumed. Now, let's proceed on to some of the forces in the y direction so we have r a y plus r b y equals to zero no other forces acting vertically so we can now write then from this nothing we don't have any extra information so let's just label this equation as equation two if this one was equation one and we can reuse it later so we're going to proceed straight away to taking moments about somewhere i'm going to choose to take moments about a so taking moments about a 
I have the point load P or five multiplied by the lever arm of three going in a clockwise direction. And that is going to be opposed by RBY multiplied by lever arm of four meters going in an anti-clockwise direction. So I can rearrange this equation and find that R, B, Y equals 15 upon four kilonewtons, and therefore it will be pointing in an upwards direction. Finally, I can now substitute sub for R, B, Y, into equation two that I set up earlier for some of the forces in the y direction. And this will get me that R A Y equals minus 15 upon four kilonewtons. And minus means that it's going in the opposite direction from which we assumed, we assumed it was going upwards. So we know that it will actually be going downwards. So we have all of the reaction forces on the structure. And now we can move on to calculate the internal forces and moments at the joint. So we want to find out what the moments and forces are at C, what the moments and forces are at D. And what we're going to do is break this structure into little pieces. So first of all, we're going to consider the column AC, so A and C, and draw a free body diagram for that. So what I'm going to do is always keep the directions of the arrows as I originally draw them. So RAY was presumed to go in the upwards direction, but we found out that it had a value of minus 15 upon 4. Likewise, RAX, we presumed that it was going to the right, but we found out that it had a value of minus 5. Be careful, either keep the negative signs or change the directions of the arrows, but don't mix and match. Okay, so I'm choosing keep the directions of the arrows and keep the, the signs. So we have the external force of 5. And now I need to put the forces that would come from the column CD that would affect the behavior of the column AC. So the beam CD will have an effect on the column AC. And so, again, we need to presume which direction they would go in. For So I'm just going to presume that we would have some force RCY pointing downwards that's coming from the beam and acting on the column. Again, I'm presuming that we have horizontal force RCX coming from the beam acting on the column and that's going to the left and we have a clockwise moment MC acting upon this column as well. And finally, to complete the free body diagram, we need to have the dimensions of three meters. And now we're ready to write our equations of equilibrium. So, first of all, some of the forces in the x direction. So I have the external force of five, which is pointing to the right. I have RAX. Presumed to be pointing to the right, but it has a magnitude of minus 5. And then I also have my reaction RCX, which I'm presuming is pointing to the left, so is therefore negative. And to be in equilibrium, the summation of these must be equal to 0. And we can almost see straight away on inspection, we have 5 minus 5. So R, C, X equals zero. So this means there is no horizontal force coming from the beam and acting upon the column. Okay, now we can go on to write down 
the sum of the forces sum of the forces in the y direction so looking at our free body diagram we have RAY which was minus 15 upon 4 so the reaction down the bottom we have an RCY which we're presuming to point downwards and therefore negative and for equilibrium must be equal to zero therefore we can take the RCY to the right hand side to make it positive and we get that RCY equals minus 15 upon 4 kilonewtons um, looking at our free body diagram we presumed RCY to go down but we know that it actually goes up we have one equation of equilibrium left try and keep the free body diagram on the page so taking moments about position A and so we have the external force P which is 5 kilonewtons multiplied by the lever arm of 3 meters going in a clockwise sense and we have a moment MC also going in a clockwise sense so I'm going to write my equation all of the clockwise on the left hand side so all positive must be equal to the anti-clockwise on the right hand side and in this case there is no anti-clockwise moments indicated so zero and therefore I can evaluate that MC equals minus 15 kilonewton meters and again inspecting our free body diagram because we have a minus sign this actually means that our moment will be going in an anti-clockwise direction we can now move on to the beam AC so we'll just draw the beam and the free body diagram of the beam and here's where we now have to be careful because I chose the forces at C to be acting in this direction on the free body diagram of AC these forces are saying what does the beam do to the column now we're looking at the beam we need to say what does the column do to the beam and therefore the directions of the arrows need to change the direction that they're going in so we have RCY now pointing upwards RCX now pointing to the right and we have an anti-clockwise moment MC and when we get to the other end so this is at C at D I'm going to presume that we have an RDY pointing downwards an RDX pointing to the left and a moment MD going in a clockwise sense to complete the free body diagram we need to have the dimension so that's four meters so we'll write down our sum of the forces in the X direction from our analysis of the column AC we know that RCX was equal to zero MC was equal to minus 15 kilonewton meters and RCY was also minus 15 upon 4 kilonewtons and we'll use the numbers with the minus signs in the Seeding analysis. So let's keep that on the screen. Sum of the forces in the x direction. So we have RCY 
dx minus r dx equals zero. But r cx was zero, therefore r dx is equal to zero. I'm going to write some of the forces in the y direction. So we have R, C, Y pointing upwards, R, D, Y pointing downwards and therefore negative, no other vertical forces, so that has to be equal to zero. So now we can substitute the known value for R, C, Y, so that was minus 15 upon 4. And we can take R D Y to the other side to make it positive. So that's 15, 15 upon 4 kilonewtons. And if we look at our free body diagram, we presumed R D Y was pointing down, but it's actually pointing upwards. So R D Y is actually pointing upwards. And now we can move on finally to the last free body diagram, and that is of the member BD. So we draw the free body diagram, and we had an RBY, we had RDY, which we presume to go down. So the equal and opposite means that we have to draw this pointing upwards. We had a moment MD on the beam going clockwise. So we have a moment MD going anti-clockwise. And finally we had RDX pointing to the left on the beam. So it needs to point to the right on the column. We already knew that RDX was equal to zero. We know that RDY was equal to minus 15 and MD was equal to zero. And we pre-calculated in looking at the entire structure that RBY was 15 upon four. So actually everything in this system is already known. So we don't need to apply any calculations. So that was minus 15, so therefore pointing downwards. Okay, we could use some of the forces in the y direction here on this extra free body diagram to provide us a check. So let's do that. So some of the forces in the y direction we have R D Y presumed to go upwards plus R, B, Y, presumed to go upwards, equals zero. And we had minus 15 upon four, plus 15 upon four equals zero. And so our check is good. So we know every force and every moment, either externally or internally, at the joints on this beam. So with that information, we can now go and draw our bending moment diagram. So final stage, draw bending moment diagram or diagrams. And so what we're gonna do is reiterate what our free body diagrams look like, but now with the forces put on there, Magnitude only, but directions corrected. So on AC, we had 15 upon 4, but pointing downwards. We had RCX was minus 5, so pointing to the left. Magnitude of 5. We had the external force P that was equal to 5, pointing to the right. We had... 15 upon 4 pointing upwards and we had 
an anti-clockwise moment of 15 kilonewton meters applied at the top. With this information, we can guess what the beam deflection would look like and then draw the bending moment diagram. Now, one little thing to note before we draw the bending moment diagram, in many textbooks, they will tell you, here's my beam. And we're going to draw sagging as positive so therefore the bending moment diagram would be positive which is great for a beam where we know what sagging or the opposite of sagging is maybe we have some load underneath and the beam deflects like this which would be hogging and therefore, depending on the sign convention, maybe our bending moment diagram would look like this. So hogging is called negative for being below the line. When we look at a column, how do we choose what is sagging or what is hogging? The concept kind of doesn't work any longer when we're looking at a vertical member or even a member inclined at any angle apart from just purely horizontal. So we're going to change, not change, but we're going to decide that we're going to draw our bending moments on the tension side of the beam. So if we had beam that had a point load applied to it, simply supported, then we would expect the beam to deflect in such a manner. And if we go with our convention of drawing the bending moment diagram on the tension side, we would expect our bending moment diagram to be drawn like this. Whether you choose that this is the moment and we'll call it positive by making our coordinate axis positive, that's another debate. But what we're going to do is just choose the convention, but we draw the bending moment diagram on the tension side. To avoid any arguments, you could draw a little symbol and therefore say that that is positive, but also this is positive pointing down. Or you could choose your moment to be negative and then choose, then draw your little symbol and that. Is positive okay but that's just a little side for this column that we're worried about now we're just going to draw the bending moment diagram on the tension side so one of the things that can be really useful if you decide how you're expecting the beam the column to deform and that's a lot easier than the bending moment so if this is the original column as a result of having the five kilonewtons we just there without applying the moment we would expect the whole column to want to rotate clockwise as a result of this 15 kilonewtons we would expect this to want to twist backwards because we've got the 15 kilonewton meters moment going in this direction. So our deflected shape would be expected to look something like this. And therefore our tension is on this right hand side of the column. So now we can go on to draw our bending moment diagram. On the tension side of the column and we know that the value is zero at the base and 15 kilonewton meters at the top. So that was for the column AC. We're now going to proceed onto the beam CD. And again, we're going to draw the free body diagram and we're going to put the magnitudes of the moments and the forces on there and 
the direction arrows corrected. So we have at C, we had 15 upon 4 pointing down, 15 upon 4 kilonewtons pointing up. So that's C, that's D. And we had a moment at C of 15 kilonewton meters. So it's now acting in a clockwise direction. So 15 kilonewton meters. And on its own, this almost looks like a cantilever with a point load applied to it. So we would expect our structure to deform like that. But there will be some effect of the rest of the structure. This isn't, this beam isn't in isolation. But we do know from this but it will be on tension underneath the beam. So we're going to draw our bending moment diagram. We know we have 15 kilonewton meters underneath the beam. And we move all the way along to having zero moment at the right hand side of the beam. So that's our bending moment diagram for AC. And finally, we can move on to BD, the column BD. We draw our free body diagram corrected. So we had a Vertical force 15 upon 4 pointing down, 15 upon 4 pointing up. So we can see this thing is in compression, but we have no moments whatsoever on this beam. So the bending moment diagram is 0 and 0. So we have three bending moment diagrams for the individual sections of the structure. 15 kilonewton meters, 15 kilonewton meters going to zero, and nothing at all happening on the right hand side. Some people choose not to have these exploded bending moment diagrams or to collect all of these diagrams together at the end. So there are two options you can go for. One is you have the exploded diagrams drawn together, but sufficiently far away that they're not overlapping and then finally zero zero and you would label up where the key points are other people also choose what they'll do is actually draw the entire structure but intact and then the bending moment we'll draw this bending moment here and this bending moment here, which, and even though they're overlapping, it's not unusual for this to be drawn like this, and then. fill in the bending moment diagram and again label it 15 15 0 0 0 either options are perfectly acceptable in an exam question or even in a count sheet in professional practice